like to welcome you all out to the second workshop now. We've had uh, one, or we have four workshops scheduled this, uh, for this series for the Plan of Conservation and Development. Um, we are lucky enough to have GCTV, who's going to be recording this workshop for, with us tonight. And I want to introduce myself. I'm the Community Development Director for the Town of East Granby. And uh, we also have Mark Waterhouse and Leslie Cosgrove, who uh, helped us with the market analysis back in 2012. And they're going to be here to kind of talk about our goals really for this evening for the second workshop are really to kind of talk about the market analysis itself. They'll present to you a little bit about what we went through as part of that process and what they were looking at. And uh, talk about some development realities. Um, you know, in the first workshop, it was a kind of an introduction session. We talked about the enabling statutes, what the plan of conservation and development's for, uh, what it's actually meant to do as far as being a, a part of the 10 year master plan for the town. And also trying to um, talk about some brainstorming um, sessions. We talked a little bit about uh, some of the areas that uh, commissioners or residents felt were important that we needed to have updated in the plan. Uh, topic, topics for future workshops, uh, number three and number four, are going to deal with uh, some of the quarry management issues or possible expansion in the future. Um, and our Commerce Park Transitional Zone as well as possible expansion or our Village Center Zone. So uh, in, those, in this workshop uh, for this evening, we'll have Mark Waterhouse come up and he'll present a little bit to you about what we went through with the market analysis. And then we have some kind of interactive exercises that we'll go through. Um, you see some maps in front of you. We have a, a little more um, interaction uh, with some of the projects that we have going on. So I'll introduce you, Mark Waterhouse. And Thank you, Gary. Uh, good evening, all. Nice to see some familiar faces uh, and some unfamiliar faces. Uh, and as you can see, this was originally done three years ago. So that means for those of you who have seen it again, this is either a refresher course or your slow learners. Okay? But we're going to go back through the stuff that Leslie and I worked on three years ago, keeping in mind that given it's three years ago, some of the stuff's a little fuzzy in my mind by this point in time. I did go back through the report uh, this afternoon just to refresh myself. And one of the things that uh, you may want to tuck away in the back of your mind is that because three years have gone by, the market may have changed. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess if there have been changes in the market, there have been good changes because when we were doing this, we were still really struggling coming out of the Great Recession. And now uh, several years have passed. The economy is uh, kind of stabilized <laughs> but picking up. Uh, so, so those are some good signs for what's going on. I have a wonderful pointer uh, that you know the commercial that they've been doing about the, the uh, website with the download speed and the upload speed. There's uh, you know, one's half of the other, so it's a half fast. Uh, uh, you know, well, I have a half fast pointer because the pointer works, but I can't re uh, move the slides. So, Gary, would you do that? <laughs> this, this, this is what we were asked to do. We were asked to give you our best advice on how you could create, stimulate growth, maximize growth, desirable growth, growth that would fit into the character of the town, not town-wide, but along the eastern portion of the Route 20 corridor, pretty much starting where we are now in the village center, but uh, continuing all the way over to the Windsor Locks lines where you get into your more industrialized area. So approximately from the government center of the Windsor uh, Locks town line here. This is what it looks like uh, graphically uh, in, in terms of there. We, we added one little piece up in here that wasn't originally part of the territory. You can't do, that's the farm, okay? You can't do very much on that farm, but it adds some critical mass to the area that you refer to as your village center, and perhaps some things could be done recreationally or uh, other sorts of things that would add to the, the mix of activities in the critical mass in the, in the village center. Here. So what are we doing? Well, Gary gave us a whole bunch of uh, documents. We reviewed them all pretty carefully. Uh, we did a, a lot of study of the land mass itself. 
that comprises the area in terms of its physical features, in terms of the uh, uh, existing land uses that were out there, as well as the ones that were proposed in your comprehensive plan. We got a bunch of uh, community and regional demographics from the Metro Hartford Alliance. Uh, we uh, worked on an inventory of your available commercial real estate, not only in East Granby, but in the, the immediately surrounding area, because on the one hand, that's good to have, gives you something marketable. On the other hand, it's competition. Every piece of property competes with every other piece of property, particularly if they're not in East Granby, uh, they're, they're across the line in Granby or Simsby or Mary or somewhere else. We did some selective interviewing. We did a survey of uh, some uh, active commercial and industrial real estate brokers, and we distilled that all down into a summary of uh, the village center, uh, the good things and the, and the bad things, the strengths and the weaknesses. We'll look at a summary of that shortly. Well, so then we started looking at the strongest market potentials, getting uh, ideas from the real estate brokers, from the community, from uh, the e regional economic development folks, from lots of uh, things. You had suggested uh, several potential uses that you might want, grocery store, pharmacy, hotel conference center. Uh, so we looked in, in fair detail at those in terms of what their specific uh, selection criteria are for picking locations and we developed a series of recommendations as you will see. Here's the strengths and weaknesses summary, very tiny, because we wanted to fit it all on uh, one line. You're one of the uh, few locations where we have worked where your list of strengths was longer than your list of weaknesses. So you've got a lot of good things uh, uh, going for you. Near I-91, I near Bradley, in a strong valley, access to Massachusetts, uh, <laughs> uh, manufacturing base, surprisingly strong manufacturing base, lab labor available, you have a good-sized labor shed, good utilities, tax rate, traffic count, quality of life, uh, the regional population, vacant buildings and, and uh, uh, sites, uh, a positive attitude toward economic development uh, by, by uh, government, particularly quality development. Uh, your, your municipal functions are all in this uh, government center. Some places they're scattered uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, good income, median and per capita income. That supports discretionary spending. Discretionary spending is what retailers uh, look for. You know, it used to be the rule of thumb was retail follows house tops. When we went into the recession, that changed to retail follows the disposable income that's underneath those housetops. Okay? So you've got good income. Part of the Bradley Development League, and you've got the Day Hill Road business cluster nearby. So we could have businesses here, a B2B kind of function, where businesses here are supporting businesses down there. The opposite side of the ledger, uh, you were lacking a cohesive vision for the village center, which was what stimulated doing the project in the first place. Lack of a critical mass, relatively small. We're trying to expand that a little bit. Some physical constraints in the land that you do have that's undeveloped. Uh, you have a moderate speed going by in front of the building uh, and some congestion at certain times of day. That makes it difficult for people to make an unplanned uh, swing off the, off the highway to go into the uh, 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 stores. The gateways can be visually improved. This means the entrance points to East Granby, east, west, north, uh, south. You have multiple zoning districts that can cause uh, confusion when people can't figure out whether or not their use is allowed in this district or that district uh, or what have you. Your commercial real estate at the time was slightly more expensive than the larger region. Some of your properties were in need of visual enhancement, visual improvement, uh, and the website at the time was inadequate to support economic development. We find this in lots of places where the community has one website that's supposed to be one size fits all, handles everything, and economic development details get lost in there. The, the businesses that are trying to find what they're interested in aren't interested in finding out who's having a picnic at the park on, on Saturday and, uh, and uh, you know, what, what uh, some of the other boards and commissions have uh, going on. So uh, we've suggested uh, improvements to the website and that economic development. What did we find? 
Population was small but growing. Every time you bring more households in, you bring more spending capability in. The more you have uh, spending capability, the more desirable you are as a location uh, for, for uh, the retailing, service producers, uh, and those sorts of things. This is another critical mass thing. We talked about the village center lacking critical mass. In terms of economic clustering, you were lacking critical mass. You had a little bit of a lot of things not a lot of any one particular thing that we could say, aha, here is a really strong unmet market opportunity. All we have to do is do this, and, and uh, people from all over the valley will flock here. That wasn't the kind of uh, uh, situation you had, and that means that most chain retailers are going to have a hard time finding the demographics, the numbers uh, that uh, they, they look for. A lot of drive-by traffic out there. I forget what the, the uh, ADT is uh, out on, on the road, but it is significant. <laughs> but because you've got that ease of driving around, that also expands the territory that people can look in. Uh, and so that gives you a fairly significant competition within the region. Already uh, mentioned your existing manufacturing base, which means a piece of your economic development effort ought to be on retaining and expanding what you already have. Don't forget about what you already have to the, uh, uh, by concentrating too much on business recruitment or attraction. Okay. What does it mean? Uh, it doesn't mean that there's going to be no development. What it probably means is the development that you get is going to be from local folks who like the area, want to invest in the area, may live in the area, uh, you know, and you'll have more of that than you would in uh, national chains. Best strategy is to focus on making East Granby as competitive a product. You are a product. In the economic development marketplace, what we sell are communities. Okay? You are uh, a product, and we need to make it as strong and attractive an investment opportunity uh, as possible. Because you could go out and throw all kinds of money at all kinds of pipe dreams uh, and uh, not end up with a whole lot, particularly if you're trying to attract uh, the kinds of chains, the drug stores and the grocery stores and so on, that already have minimum criteria that we already know uh, you, you don't meet. Yeah. So what did we recommend that you do? First of all, make the, the uh, village center district very pedestrian friendly uh, and inviting. Lots of different things that you can do to enhance uh, the experience of coming here. I think we may have skipped the uh, screen here. Unless we got a couple of them out of order. Hang on. Okay, yeah, we skipped one right there. That's the next one you want to pull that one? That's it. Okay, there's one, I think there's one before that, unless it just got out of order. Yeah, there it is. Sorry. Okay, so expand the village center district geographically, make it larger. As, as you've been talking for a long time, maybe you've done this by now, but at that point in time, uh, you had been talking about. Uh, establishing a commerce park traditional uh, tra yeah, transitional zone and we said it's time to stop talking do it you know or, or get off the pot you know one of the uh, you know, make a decision maintain design scale and quality just because you get new stuff doesn't mean that uh, can detract or should detract from the community gateway signage we gave you the photograph and some suggestions uh, for uh, how to do that, other places we've seen around the country. Uh, create a master plan, a, a written, graphical, accompanied by textual description of how you're going to go about uh, taking care of the village center to uh, make sure that it has uh, economic vitality. We started the process by uh, what we gave you, but you're into the process uh, even more now. Consider creating what in Connecticut is called a uh, special services district. Some places call them business improvement districts, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, and perhaps a tax increment financing district. I was uh, you know, part of the 
uh, see this Connecticut Economic Development Association board meeting today where we were discussing a new bill uh, that's in Hartford for increasing the availability of tax increment financing uh, to stimulate development. Are you all familiar with what, how tax increment financing works, TIF district? Basically what it says is, let's look at the piece of property we have today. It's got a certain taxable value, right? It's assessed and it pays that much uh, taxes. We need to make some improvements in it to attract the business. Maybe we need roads, maybe we need utilities, those sorts of things. So we issue some bonds to uh, pay for those improvements. How do we pay off those bonds? Well, when the, the uh, additional investment comes along, a company comes in, builds a building on that piece of property, that property now has a higher taxable value. And we take that tax increment that came from the new uh, investment and we use it to pay off the bonds. Right? So that's how TIFs or tax increment uh, financing works. Village uh, Center Special Services District or Business District is an area where the property owners and occupants get together and decide that they want to do something and they're going to pay for it uh, themselves. So it doesn't come out of the town uh, pocket, it comes out of people deciding they, they like uh, better decorations, uh, they, they, they band together to do their own snow removal, you know, those, those sorts of things. So lots of possibilities there. Then, next slide, we talked about pest pedestrian friendly. We gave you a list of uh, 10 or 12 other planning and development approaches all described uh, in, in the uh, uh, study. You have a fairly substantial historic district. Uh, it overlaps, uh, in, at least in part, with the village center district. Uh, so we can take advantage of folks who have interest in smaller community history and development uh, as a way to bring them in to the village center. Establish a bi-local program. Uh, the numbers last I saw said something like, of every dollar that is spent in local merchant establishments, about 70 cents of that stays in the community. If you're buying from someone who's not located here, almost 100% of that dollar goes elsewhere. Called retail leakage or, or sales leakage. We want to keep uh, uh, East Granby dollars in East Granby. And in fact, we want to bring in other people to spend their dollars in East Granby uh, and have those dollars stay here. Your a Bradley Area Transportation uh, study that had a whole series of recommendations that were worthy of implementation. We've already talked about the need to upgrade uh, your, your website, particularly focused on economic development. De design Advisory Committee. Uh, how many times, uh, maybe you don't have this here. Most communities have got developers who come waltzing in with their expensive plans prepared by some expensive architect who didn't understand your regulations or preferences and now you got to uh, convince them that what the, they spent the money on is not going to fly here. A lot of places have established a design advisory committee. This is, doesn't have any uh, authority to flog you or turn anything down but it can advise the, the person proposing to do the uh, development and their design consultants on what it is you would like, how the building should appear uh, to, to be what you think would fit in your community because it is your community. Establish a weekly uh, electronic commerce promotional newsletter. Example we gave you there was from Danville, Kentucky, one of my favorite uh, communities, and every uh, Thursday or Friday I get the, uh, my computer. It's a list of all of the things, very colorful, very attractive, all of the list of things that's going on, sales that are going on, what movie's going to be showing out on the, on the green uh, that week, job opportunities in the, in the stores, all that sort of stuff, a way to help your merchants promote at uh, low or no cost. Niche marketing study. One of our friends is a guy by the name of David Milder. He is a specialist in downtown uh, and, and retail marketing, and he put out a book a number of years ago uh, called Niche Marketing. There are places around the country that have developed a specialty in certain kinds of things. One of the places David worked was Rutland, Vermont. 
which draws people from all over northern New England, New York State, who come to Rutland to shop in their wedding and home furnishing uh, stores. So you're going to get married and you want to start setting up a, an apartment or a house, people go to Rutland because all of the stores are there. So that's what we mean by a niche marketing strategy. Uh, Waynesville, Ohio, uh, 40 years ago maybe now, proclaim, proclaim themselves to be the antiques capital of the Midwest and trademark the term. They had three antique stores at the time. They now got 35 in their downtown. So they proclaimed a niche and then built it as opposed to recognizing a niche that was uh, already there. They also uh, have an annual sauerkraut festival that draws about 400,000 people for, for a weekend. No. And they have no Germans and no cabbage. <laughs> uh, uh, and then find as many different uses for the village center as you can. Variety is what will bring more and more people in. Uh, not everybody is going to come to the same location week after week after week after week. So we need a variety of different things to draw different people uh, to come into the village center. And that's it. I think I did that all in one breath. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seems like it. <laughs> Mark, you do a lot of work around uh, not only the state of Connecticut, but other places nationally. Um, you know, since we have done this process back in 2012, uh, could you let us know maybe, you know, some things have changed since then and, and maybe to expand on that in the next five years, what do you, you know, what, do, what are some of the trends that people in the economic development world are talking about? Yeah, I mean, about? It, it, there's different, different pieces of this. And one of the things that comes to mind first for here is uh, you know, changes in retailing. Major, major changes in retailing. Uh, all you need to do is think, what was, what was the announcement last week? Bad news in, in retailing. Radio Shack going belly up, okay? So we, we've had this whole series of nationally known brand name retailers uh, that have closed up shop or had to to uh, uh, restructure. Uh, so there's been a whole lot of changes uh, uh, going on there. Walmart has been working on uh, you know small stores, 12,000, 15,000 square foot stores in some places. Uh, uh, so many you know, that might be a possibility uh, uh, here, given your your drive by traffic. That that possibility didn't exist uh, pretty much three years ago. So, so that, that's one. Uh, the, I already mentioned the, if you're going to sell this place for retail, you've got to sell it on the basis of disposable income, not on the basis of traffic count, which is actually to your, uh, I mean, uh, house top count. Uh, traffic count is also important. Those are two things that you've got going for you. Uh, in terms of your industrial sector, which you need to be uh, you know, protecting, one of the big things uh, going on there, there yeah, yeah, any of you heard of Baxter? Baxter is a little industrial robot. Cost uh, 22,000 bucks, about half the cost of a normal industrial robot. You can uh, take it out of the box, set it up, program it, uh, you, 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 using, I mean, basically it's, it's really simple. You want Baxter to do this, you move Baxter's arm, click a button. Baxter's now learned that. Now you go like this, click the button. I mean, it's called the open source robot programming language. Uh, uh, Baxter is projected to do away with 30 million, as many as 30 million American jobs in the next uh, 12 to 15 years. So if you've got a significant manufacturing base and a significant number of your people employed in manufacturing, robotics, robotics and automation is one of the things that we need to uh, uh, keep an eye out for. Uh, continually looking at more and more regional approaches to doing things uh, because that is more cost effective than lots of smaller uh, communities uh, trying, to, trying to row by themselves. Uh, technology is going to impact everything. There's going to be all kinds of new opportunities uh, in, in terms of production, but all kinds of new impacts on your retailing and service establishments and, and how they market with technology and, and how they do order fulfillment with technology and, and lots of other things. So that's one of the ones that's uh, going on. Uh, but we are seeing uh, stuff come back all around the country. The economy coming back. 
Unfortunately, Connecticut is one of the slowest and lowest. Now, part of that is because we seem to go out of our way to make it hard to get projects done. Uh, so that puts the uh, onus on most communities to try and streamline their permit approval process as much as possible. Any questions for Mark? I, we've invited Mark to stay in on the rest of the presentation. And you can pick on Leslie, too. And <laughs> Leslie, feel free to, to chime in. Um, much of the rest of the evening is a, to talk a little bit more about the individual sectors themselves and kind of for East Granby what we're seeing and certainly Mark and, and Leslie if you have uh, anything to add feel free to chime in. If there are questions this is an informal process we want you guys to you know ask and, and, and uh, come up with ideas. Um, but some of the marketing sectors I list out here in the paper um, and there may be others but uh, you know manufacturing we're you know, nationally in general, uh, I'd say five or so years ago, a lot of manufacturing was, you know, we always hear negatively, is leaving the, um, the country, moving south for cheaper labor. But a lot of our high-tech manufacturing jobs are actually still focused in, in and around here. And we see that here in East Granby along our Commerce Park area. Um, many uh, companies to do with aerospace, uh, electron welding, we also have companies that are uh, doing wire and cable and rock bestus, uh, working with lasers with New Fern. So there's a uh, one of the things that we we had a process of doing about um, I'd say the last three or four years with the first selectman's office. We started to have manufacturing workshops with our companies. Uh, we were starting to see a lot of our companies grow and expand. Um, rock bestus has expanded over 200,000 square feet since I've been here. Um, New Fern just added on a recent addition, and we have a, um, an application now for uh, MB Aerospace, which used to be Delta Industries for a sizable addition as well. So we are seeing these companies grow, and uh, when we had the manufacturers' workshops and we sat down and talked to them, they said, you know, we're growing and expanding, and one of the reasons why we're located here, you know, much like the, you know, some of the, the national talk that we hear about manufacturing companies leaving, is they need to be here because of the educated workforce. On the downside, one of their largest complaints is that the educated workforce that they have is a, an aging workforce, and they're 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 having a hard time um, retaining uh, younger kids to kind of get involved in that program. So we started to do some things of trying to get the, the schools included, um, you know, let people know. Uh, we invited the schools, uh, the administrators, and some of the principals and guidance counselors to actually take a tour of these uh, manufacturing plants and to see that they are actually high-tech places. They're not the manufacturing plants of the old of the 50s that we think of or as dirty, uh, smelly workshops, uh, and that a lot of them are based around technology. And to Mark's point, you know, with things, programs like Baxter and robotics and things like that, you know, those are the things of the future. You're still, as much as it may displace an actual worker, you're still going to need people to actually work on the machinery themselves and the robotics themselves. Um, so. From a manufacturing standpoint, you know, that's kind of what some of the trends that we're seeing. From a retail standpoint, much like everything, things have kind of gone to a bigger box. Um, retail has kind of gone to a bigger box, and as such, as it's gotten bigger, it's moved out of some of the smaller towns. And one of the, one of the situations or weaknesses that we find here in East Granby is that we are a town of 5,200 people. Um, typical grocery change, national chain stores are looking for a population of at least 10,000 people to, uh, you know, locate in those particular areas. So I think some of the strengths and weaknesses that were picked up and some of the recommendations were centered around growing our village centers on making it that desirable, building up that critical mass and concentrating on some of the positives. But just because that's the way, that's what the companies are looking for now doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. As Mark mentioned before, they're, you know, the companies themselves are constantly changing their models too. So while a CVS or a grocery store may be looking for 10,000 people, uh, some other local grocery markets like Aldi or maybe smaller chains may actually consider a, a town with a, with a smaller demographic. Um, or, you know, Walmart may be looking to kind of break in with that, uh, you know, smaller box and start to make, rather than looking to create large boxes, 100,000 square feet for retail, they may actually be looking to create smaller markets of 30,000 square feet and kind of 
you know, branch themselves out and grow that way as well. And we're starting to see that train around the country, not necessarily locally here yet, but that could be something that changed that may, may help spur that retail development here in the future. Um, distribution and warehouse, that's also something that we see that's growing. Um, typically, what we see is that, again, it's a big box that's growing in this particular area. We've seen growth in uh, Walgreens, um, Tire Rack, Dollar Tree, now Amazon, which is over a million and a half square feet. So those distribution bro boxes and hubs are still finding a need to locate in this area because they need to be close to the transportation centers, um, but they're, they're growing exponentially larger and larger. Uh, smaller warehousing, there's, we still have some freight companies obviously being having good highway access on 91, 95, and Mass Pike. Um, that's still a desirable uh, market development. Office, you have, and I put uh, corporate, small, and home office. We see a different trend. I mean, corporate office itself is kind of a stagnant market. There's an oversupply of, of office space. Um, the idea of East Grand being attracting a corporate office, it, could it possibly attract one? Yes, but it's probably a, a one in a million chance. You're really looking for that corporate office that wants to, you know, um, for whatever reason be located in, in East Grammy for some particular reason. Um, and that could be the CEO lives in East okay. Grammy or a neighboring town. <laughs> it, it could be something as simple as that. Um, smaller office, I think a lot of the smaller office, the demand for smaller office is kind of lowered. And part of that's because people are <coughs> moving their smaller offices to their home and they're telecommuting or uh, doing their work from uh, the internet and not at home on their computers. So I think the demand for office is kind of low, but we've seen success in that where, you know, when I first started here, StubHub had about 45 employees and they're up to approximately 350, wow. I believe. So uh, there, are, there are areas that are still growing and that can. Um, medical office, we do see the, the medical offices starting to move outside of, um, the, the city uh, limits. Most of your medical offices, you know, 10 years ago, you, if you wanted to go to the doctor's office, you'd have to go to Hartford. Now we see, you know, medical offices establishing in, in other places all over the place. So there is that, I think there'll continue to be that demand. Uh, nursing home and assisted living, I put that down that, you know, it's a, as we have an aging demographic where there's still gonna be a growing need for that in the, at least the near future. Uh, residential, we're seeing single family demands kind of coming down. Uh, residential development, I can tell you from a building permit standpoint, we're not seeing a lot of people coming in looking to build uh, new single family development. Um, our single family development that we do have, uh, we seem to have a, enough of a housing stock e existing uh, today, and there doesn't seem to be that demand right now for the new. And some of that has to do with the, the, the trends with the banks. Uh, loans and mortgages have become a little bit more difficult. They've been uh, more scrutinized as far as uh, being able to, to get a loan as easily. So some of that is, is naturally having an effect on the market for single family homes itself. On the, the opposite side, we are seeing a growing demand in multifamily homes, apartments, townhouses, things like that. So the, the trend is just kind of shifting. People are looking for a, maybe a more transient type of housing. Um, you know, in demographics, we see people, you know, the demographic age from 20 to 30, they're getting out of college, uh, they're maybe settling down, they may have disposable income, but they're just starting out in a job and they don't necessarily have that security that they're ready to start a family. Um, you know, the, the, the age of marriage is, is going up as well. When somebody, tip, you know, back, say 10, 20 years ago, people used to get married when they were 20 years old, and now, we're, now they're waiting until later and later in life. So I think that trend is, you know, having, uh, you know, people may, they may look for an apartment uh, or some sort of condominium of, of some type that may have the same value of, of a mortgage or the same high price tag of a mortgage, but they're able to get out of that, and they don't have the burden of, of trying to sell that property. The other piece the of that, Gary, is that same millennial cohort that you're talking about, the 20 to uh, low 30 age group, 
uh, is that uh, many of them saw their parents or, or older brothers and sisters uh, uh, lose their life savings when, when their uh, home value uh, plummeted and, and they ended up owing more on a mortgage than they could get out of, uh, out of the house. And so they have a distinct aversion right now to uh, putting any kind of money, in, uh, any kind of equity into a lodging. They'd much rather rent it. Right. And I, you could understand the security of that, too, especially if they're just out of college trying to start a new career and aren't sure whether this is going to be the job that they're going to be in for the next 20 years uh, when they hear instabilities in the market and people laying off and things like that. So I, I think that trend is going to continue to change. Uh, we also see the same in our aging demographic of people wanting to be closer in uh, not necessarily in a single family home where they have to take care of the yard and have the projects. They want to be in a walkable community, something something a little more active lifestyle. Um, so those are some of the trends that I think are help pushing the demand for multifamily houses versus uh, single family homes. Uh, hotels, we're obviously located near the airport. Uh, some of the trends that I hear is that we have plenty of hotel rooms in, regionally in the area. We have seen some success with some new hotel development in the Day Hill Road area, and I do believe that we're, we're close enough to that concentration of the corporate work center that you know, there is a possibility that uh, East Granby, if uh, marketed right, could you know, potentially um, attract such a, a, a thing. Restaurants do very well here. We have a, a large daytime population with, our, with all of our employers in the manufacturing sector and also the, the Armed National Guard. Um, so, you know, the restaurants are the daytime population, especially for, for lunchtime, are, are doing well. Um, even when one closed down, we had Green Leafs that just closed down recently. They're opening up Center Grill. Uh, the Scomies also closed down, and now we're opening up a, a Three Brothers. So they, there always seems to be a general interest in, in having the, the restaurant business. Construction and trade. Um, kind of goes along with some of the other things that we talked about with single family development. It's maybe not in the residential side, but there are, you know, we are still building roadways. Um, so there, you know, the Lasso and the Quarry are, all, are, are doing very well. So there are, there are still construction and trade businesses that are, that are surviving. Services, it will be kind of a supply and demand thing. I put down personal and business. One of the things that we need to consider is that if we have a, a business stock in and around the Commerce Park area, that they're going to require services for printing and uh, computer, fixing computers and things of that nature, along with personal services. We all need places to get our hair cut and our nails done and things of that nature. <laughs> and I don't know if, if anybody else has any others that they, they'd like to talk about or think of, but those are just a, a few to kind of give you guys an idea of where, what the development realities are. I mean, if we're looking, the problem that we have over the next 10 years is we're looking to attract people to come to East Granby. We have to keep our, 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 our goals and, and values and recommendations that we're going to have in our plan of conservation development realistic to what the market's going to provide for us. So if there's any questions or comments for either Mark or myself on you know, some of those realities. The only question that, that, um, that I hear is you know, we're, we're still talking about demographics for businesses, and I thought I heard Mark say that's kind of a, an older type thing. It's kind of changed to per capita income per household. For the retailers, so, yeah. Okay, so is that something that we should be talking about now, opposed to demographic but type stuff? Th there's, there's another reason to worry about the, the uh, population counts and, and ages and stuff like that. Uh, if you're going to help retailers and service establishments in the village center be successful, the more you can do to help them have more people with more disposable income within even walking distance, uh, the, the better off you'll be. This is the actual village cluster concept mm -hmm. uh, where you uh, live and work and shop and have your recreation all in a walkable neighborhood. <clears throat> yeah, because we've always looked at you know, uh, CVS, Walgreens, you know, the, the pharmacy, the pharmaceutical, uh, always based it on demographics. Mm -hmm. So that's still reality. That's but, still the trend. Is well, and even, I mean, it, income statistics are demographics. Okay. They, they, I mean, that's demographics are not just population. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. 
Any other questions or thoughts about different developments or marketing sectors? All right. One of the next exercises that we have is uh, the next two sheets here. Um, we'd like to talk about, you know, over the next 10 years, before we start to consider what sort of development we, we want in town, um, we need to kind of, or where, you know, this is more not necessarily a site specific area. I don't want you to think of when I say what, what sort of development do you see or do you want in the town and see developed in the next 10 years? It's not necessarily site specific, but is there, is there a market that you think that we're not serving or that we could serve? It doesn't, and then we can kind of talk about the realities of that. One of the ones that we've always had is grocery. Uh, everybody, there seems to be a desire. Well, I think you could put up retail with a capital R. Okay. And you could include in that um, a pharmacy. You could include in that uh, a grocery store. You could include in that you know, specialty grocery store or some sort of, you know, some place where you could buy more than a, <coughs> a bottle of milk. Like a Super Bowl. <laughs> No. Keeping in mind that our build out is what, Gary, about 8,500? I think that's what we had it at last. 85 or is it 9,000 as a build out? Uh, for population, I, I want to say 8,500. I think it's 8,500. That would be our build out. If we, were, if we built to now, what we're presently zoned and the developers got hot on it. And and that number is actually probably the property in the in the manner in which it's zoned. Our residential base would max at 8,500 people. Right, and that number's probably gotten a lot lower because uh, we've had preservation uh, over on 189. This is a 430-acre parcel. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how many households you could fit on 430 acres, but you know, one acre zoning and give take uh, you know a couple of households because you actually have to build the the infrastructure and the roads. Um, that's a considerable amount of houses. Um, so, I think it's still a decent number, though. I no, mean, it is. And again, it's a complete, you know, fantasy world. You know, development yep, we've runs had wild through Scramby. <laughs> averaging five to ten permits over the last. Right. On the other hand, we have seen a what's it, nine percent, ten percent population growth in the last ten years. That's fairly significant for any, I think, for any community in the state of Connecticut, mm -hmm. which the state as a whole, I don't know what our growth rate is, but it's, it was, I can, uh, it think was, you can count it on one hand. It, but it was, yeah, it was actually, the state. State. actually yeah. a net, uh, a net 30,000 negative, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think our general population, uh, people realize that the max could be, you know, 8,500. Right. Uh, I, I think people have a, like, like it may double, you know, like a, like a South Windsor or an, or an East Windsor or things like that, that, that you, that, that you realize that, that it doubled back in the 80s, there are, I believe 70, 80s. And I think people feel that, that same way about us here. But I think we need to get that out to people too, sure. before what we want to see is we have to realize that that's going to be the max here. We're, we're never going to make that ten thousand. No way. Well, we could if we, we could if we were if we were aggressive in the way we wanted our future development to be. Right. But if we sat there and said that you know, damn the torpedoes. Who cares about open space? Right. You know, who cares about having all this property over by yeah, I mean, you the airport that's currently? To make it be 10, you bet right. you could. Right. You could take all that undeveloped land over by the airport, which we would hope to. Have Develop Commerce Park right. and, and attract businesses, and you could sit there and say, "Hey, let's just rezone that." You know, I think multi-family, and let's 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 go run wild. Yeah. You could. Yeah, I so think in the nineties we talked about a potential for fifteen thousand if you went. Right. If you went. Uh, yeah, you went yeah. crazy. If you went crazy, yeah. Right. 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 So Paul, if we're not going to break through, oh, I'm sorry. No, the other that's Paul one or Paul two? Paul <laughs> uh, you had your hand up first. Well, I think you know I, on this list that you're making, to support any of these things, especially the village center the concept, we've got to strengthen the multifamily aspect in this okay. village center. Yeah, yeah. I think, so you've I think got we're going to do it by residential single-family homes. 
everybody's got cars, they're going to go to the big box, they're going to go to CVS, but if you have some apartments, you know, like Mr. Wilson's property and or in the village center, that will support them to get the walking traffic to mark, to mark the right? I think that's one of the key issues in this whole process. Well, and I would label it, I agree, and I'd label it as upscale apartments. Well, yeah, as, so as, part of, as part of the component. Absolutely. And, you know, to validate what, what, what Mark validated our thought process by saying, you know, you need a strong village center. Well, how do you get footsteps there? Well, that's one way. Or a mixed you, use where there's a, a community. It's right, a, absolutely. Um, you absolutely. know, the restaurant and shops or hair salon along with in the right. apartment community. And getting back to what Gary said earlier, even though I'm very old, I happen to have a lot of young friends and, and nephews, nieces, and things like that. And the percentage of them that their first goal is to buy a single family home has decreased dramatically. Mm -hmm. Many of them, I'd say 80%, and I'd have to count, of the young people I know, all go to first class rentals. Because mm -hmm. their lifestyles are different. They're right. not interested in mowing the lawn and shoveling the driveways. They'd rather go kayaking or Winnipesaukee or half the people I know are up at Gunstock Mountain with, you know, with the kids this week and stuff, yep. rather than staying home. So I, I think the lifestyle has changed in the young with the disposable income. And right. those are the ones that are going to be looking for this. Yeah, even the entry level home, even if it's at a $200,000 uh, know, mortgage or something like that, they'll, they'll quite literally still have a rent that'll carry the same weight, so say $1,400, whatever that may be. And you know that would that would point to your, what you're saying. It would be you know, upscale. Yes. But it's also something that they a little more transient that if they needed to, um, you know, it, it could have other opportunities. I don't, I don't want to mow the uh, lawn or shovel the driveway either. Does that make me younger than I think I am? <laughs> uh, no, it makes you wish you were younger. <laughs> Anything else? <coughs> well, no, there's no wrong answers either. By the way. So, so if we can't, if the, the population doesn't sustain or justify, you know, the, these different things, is, is there a, a, I'll say a transient population that we can consider? And I don't, I don't, I mean that in terms of a, uh, a predictable. Um, when I have one mind, it's like a sports complex or something that's, you know, in the winter time, you know, winter time soccer and indoor swimming, and you know, the, the, there's a, a large population of, you know, parents wanting to control what their kids are doing all the time and. You know, just uh, you know, something that, that draws them to town to you know, so they'll, they'll grocery shop or go to the pharmacy after they drop off the kids at the swim meet and you know, get something sort of to eat. Thing. Get something to eat. I mean, we're very close to, to 91, and so it, it's not an indigenous population, but it's sort of a transient population that might support more. Having having kids in that sport age and yeah. myself uh, going to the bubble in East Windsor or Tolland or yeah, Oakwood. Friends from Avon that bring up kids there. And some some of these people travel mm -hmm. quite a well, ways. They do. Yeah. Including myself. <laughs> Especially if it's hot. I, I think yeah. continuing to enhance the manufacturing base is really important to the town for the value that it brings on several levels, including uh, folks with good income that are working in town uh, to uh, the tax base. Yeah. Okay. And realizing that probably some of that manufacturing, I mean, the growth that we've seen from manufacturing that hasn't necessarily been from the new, it's been from our existing. Mm. So I think you know, making sure that we have room for our new companies to grow, I can tell you that you know, Rock Bestness has pretty much filled up their site. They can't grow any, any larger on their existing site. MB Aerospace slash Delta Industries is uh, about to come forward with an application that is building out the potential on their site. New Fern is has basically one more one more cut of the pie in looking at you know possible addition down the uh, down the road. And a lot of our existing companies are looking to actually lease space. They, they actually lease space within town. Um, smaller spaces, 10, five, 10 to 5,000 square foot yeah, spaces. That technology they, the world. Yeah, that they just store stuff in for now or whatever. But if we don't have that space, they're going to look for it somewhere else if they're, they're expanding. So that's one thing to keep in mind. We have successfully something like a, uh, it escapes now, 
CVS Manufacturing, they came, uh, they actually came from Windsor. Uh, so there is a little bit of movement, you know, they, they were in a 20,000 square foot space where they were in Windsor and they basically doubled their size here in East Granby to a 40,000 square foot space. You know, we're talking about uh, two different things, I think, here. People who live in East Granby and need services and need, you know, the, the things that make life work. But we're also tra talking about attracting other people to come in for an event or, or a special thing. Sure. Um, I think we have to be really careful about planning parking mm -hmm. because um, I, there, there are some places that I just won't go to because they've got nice I shops agree. and everything, but I won't go there because you can't park. I agree. I mean, I've done that myself. I mean, Christmas shopping, I try to stay away from Manchester as much as possible. <laughs> and so I, I, I understand access management, getting the ease of getting into mm -hmm. places. Um, in the community I used to work with before in Avon, we have several access management issues along Route 44. Mm -hmm. If it's not easy to get into a place, we won't go there. So mm -hmm. that is something important to think about. All right, is there uh, one of the ones that I, I guess I would throw up there? I, I never noticed. Them. We don't necessarily have a nursing home, and I'm not sure what necessarily nursing homes are looking for as far as communities. But I think East Granby would a de decent community for a, a nursing home. But um, I would think that that would be a standalone purpose that. Again, you know, the, the executive vice president or president lives in town. Possibly. Says, there's a lot of cheap you know, Possibly. valued land that we could do. Because, you know, it's not like you need, I mean, within the driving distance with the highways and everything, it's not like you need to be in a specific location. Mm-hmm. Yeah, places like that, that have a hundred. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm you, trying you to keep it open to you guys, but. And doing everything and now you're lining up that for you. So you're, I think I'm going to need a place to retire at some point, right? <laughs> but you could have, like, yeah, you know, I mean, that could be 100, 150 yeah. jobs also. I mean, particularly, if, particularly if you look at it not just as a nursing home or not just as assisted living, but the three levels so that people can age. Yeah, the continuum of care. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, uh, the folks in the business refer to the three levels of the senior centers as being the go-go's, the slow-go's, and the no-go's, uh, and, and we're creating uh, you know, residential environments to take care of all three groups. So like Seabury, or is it in, in, uh, in Bloomfield? I've just put hotels down only because we're, we're too close to the airport to not to have it on there, I suppose. Right. Is there anything that, uh, moving on to the next one, is there anything that we necessarily don't want to see developed? Big box doors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Big box doors. Big box doors. Retail? Retail. How big do you have to be before you're a big box? That's a good question. Yeah. Right. You need like a whole depot. Mm -hmm. or, uh, you mean 70,000 square feet? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you draw the line? Right. Yeah. Where yeah. Where do you some draw the some line? people think of like Barnes and Noble as a big box. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And um, big, big box retail, when I first came here, was a, a development pressure that we definitely had. I don't think it's necessarily development pressure at this current time right now. Do think that we have the traffic count to, to support that, but I think uh, with kind of the downslope in the economy regarding retail, there hasn't necessarily been that pressure. We did, in, at one point, have a, uh, a, a landowner that was looking to currently market a site for big box retail, and it never came to fruition. Um, at that time, I believe, and maybe John can help me with this, but I had always heard that it was kind of 50-50, you know, depending on, you know, if you took the community's pulse on whether big box retail would work. Mm -hmm. On one hand, it does help as an anchor to try to provide uh, a growing environment for whatever reason. You know, I can point to East Windsor before Walmart was there. When you looked at Route 5, you know, uh, the plazas like Sophia's Plaza and the development on Route 5 was all auto auction century, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, automotive sales kind of orientated and 
because Walmart is there for whatever reason, it does justify uh, investment into property. So that's something to think about. Not condoning one or the other. Mm -hmm. Any other sort of development that we don't necessarily want to see? I don't know how to uh, describe it, but uh, in any type of business that would create substantial large truck traffic. I, you know, and I, That's your distribution warehouse. Distribu yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have, I actually, I'm not against large distribution Large warehouse. or small? Or somehow we got to get the trucks in and out. That's what it is. Yeah. It's Walgreens, it's Dollar Tree. Right, right. That's what the people down on Seymour told us they didn't want. Runs right through, well. right through his grandpa. So, uh -huh. And I see it every time behalf, I leave, and I see it every no time say. I come in. Okay. No, I, I wouldn't want to see it on Route 20. You know, I mean, we're, we're all talking about the, <coughs> the old big section piece that we have in town is the 130. Yeah. What do you call it, the nanny property? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's a name that kind of stuck. He was a representative that was. Uh, that was trying to participate, brokers that was trying to sell the property. It's a little more than a year ago they came to us. Yeah, you know, and, and I was involved in that with DDC, but the, the big problem that we saw at the EDC is how do you get trucks in and out of that property unless they buy into Windsor somehow. You know, and there's, there's problems. And yeah, one, of, one of our future workshops would probably talk more about that. Um, just in general, that was that was the particular piece that was large enough to, to house the big box retail that I was talking about before. Um, but when they weren't able to develop it for that purpose, you know, now they're currently kind of looking at a, a big box distribution because that's you know that's what the market is is calling for. I mean, when people put their property up for sale, they sell it to whoever they think can, is willing to buy it. And people that are looking for large ac <coughs> contiguous acreage right now in this market. Or Walgreens and, and Dollar Tree and Amazon and the big box distribution. So. We're going to talk about that later on, right? Um, yeah. Next month. Yeah, next, next month. month. Okay. Um, How about Route 75 uh, fast food? Okay. Good one. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. That's yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I like Quaint. Reference. Room 75. <laughs> <laughs> it's not trade park, it's okay. It's like a long term short term video. Yeah. <laughs> Valet parking? Yeah, that, that, that is all. Airport do. parking. Yeah, yeah, airport parking. So, yeah. Because I think we're going to have more pressure. <coughs> we, here. we do get asked. I like to just go back to where you have hotels where you put that in. Yeah. You just put slash and put slow food. Slow food? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Real nice kind restaurant would be okay. Restaurants yeah. that don't slow. have a double Z in them. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting way of putting it, Janet. Slow food. Like slow that. food. Can I <laughs> double Z? Are we talking dinner no oriented? Pizza. No, no, no Z's. Dinner oriented, though, yeah. right? Yes. Like the black That's actually a whole movement around the country. The slow, slow food movement has been going on for four or five years. Okay, these grammy support something other than an Italian restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> If it's the right restaurant, that's Absolutely. good. I believe it can. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah. I guess on, and you know, also just going backwards for a second on development. I mean, if we don't want to see big box and what's what's the large uh, electronics company? J.P. Richards. What's, what's PC Richards. PC Richards. We don't want to see a PC Richards, but we'd like to see a Holloways. Oh. You know, again, go yeah. Europe. Yeah. You know, the, the differentiation, local ownership. Uh, you know, a, a, a store. So I'm not saying those are the niches we want, but I think that's the you kind of flavor like that, that I'm saying that would be pretty important. much for description along with the big box retail, what would work, what wouldn't. Right. Or what would make the travel town? Yeah, I think I would consider Holloway it's a big box, so. Yeah. Would I consider no? But that's a t I'd rather see. Oh, absolutely. I, I'd rather see a, a homegrown, yeah. very nice right. store as opposed to a chain. Stores. We're, we're offer like sure. bigger stores. So. Yes. Dan? Uh, what about auto dealerships? Are we interested or not interested? I don't know. 
there's no wrong right. answer. <laughs> you know, from if somebody if from somebody feels if somebody feels strongly on the other side, they could always ask to put it on the other side. So <laughs> uh, that they use up a lot of land and uh, tend not to have great tax revenue. Right. I'm, I'm assuming exactly. it's you're you're speaking of it negatively. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just put automotive use. <laughs> I can't, well. You need to repair. repair yeah, we do need. Okay. Going back to development, how about, um, you know, recently we've had a few wine vin vineyards around, beer and wine type of places. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that's something that the downside to that. <laughs> I don't think so. At least I wouldn't argue. <laughs> well, you call vineyard slash agriculture. Okay. And actually, you know, we, we have seen a little bit of comeback in agriculture. Um, you know, some of the farmers are. Oh, oh. Oh. Some of the some of the farmers are, are actually um, you know, doing uh, you know purchasing property. Um, Dan, you some, do that to my report. <laughs> <laughs> I have extra. I have. Um, I'm just so glad it's on tape. That's true. <laughs> you know, well, thanks for the reminder, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to let you know that. Um, the 430 acre farm that was uh, permanently preserved that the state actually bought the development rights for that piece of property. Uh, it's currently owned by OJ Thrall who farms it for the cigar wrappings. Um, but we have seen uh, up on uh, Griffin Road, uh, Griffin Farms de developing some of the property there. Uh, the Cedars have plans in the future for a, for a farm store. Uh, the last three or four years we've been having successfully a farmer's market here in our village center zone to try to get people involved in that so and there is still that push for agriculture and obviously that was one of the things that was important to us ten years ago in our uh, in our plan to uh, to keep that <coughs> agricultural heritage I was going to say with the, some of the things that people are thinking are negative if, if they're done right it could be a positive thing big box retail if it's done right, distribution if it's done right, maybe a few specific fast food restaurants if they're placed in the right places. I don't think everyone's going to say all of that's bad. Right. I can see like, you know, like just to get into the big box retail where you draw the line. Look, look at the negative aspects. And what the building will look like. Make it more of a clean. On the fast food, John, I, I, I primarily agree with you. What I was saying is let's not look like 75. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean right. that you can't have that, those components because those components might be beneficial right. to the community. Right. But you just want to you know, not look like Route 5 in West Springfield right. and Route 75 in Winter Locks. And I mean, it's looking at distribution. Street. You know, it's like the, the negative thing about distribution is the truck traffic. If we can deal with the mm -hmm. truck traffic in such a way, then Distribution center may not be a bad, there was a bad thing. Well, yeah, it I wasn't mean, the concept of distribution center so much as right. we have to really. Well, I mean, you know, on that parcel that we'll be talking about at the future meeting, there's a back way into International Drive that, you know, could, perhaps that would be, that would be, that would be the ideal. ideal. Is it fast food as the use well, per se, or is it fast food as a whole line of freestanding fast food uh, buildings? Because if you put a subway uh, down in your shopping center uh, out here, that's fast food. If you I look at McDonald's in Geisler's Plaza, that's... What, uh, what I was talking about was, was, the ladder, about was, was your ladder like, comment, like Route 75, which is a freestanding right, yeah. right. Right. So, right. Right. so it's right. not the fast food use, it's uh, uh, lots of fast food buildings, Over you know, that, which isn't of reflected up there on the... On the left. So lots of fast food buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's clarification planning characters. Well, to the point, to the point, just put sites. I.e. Sites. Yeah. Sites is good. What you're, doing, what, you're doing, what you're doing is you're, you're, making, a, you're making a decision. Am I going to take a, a major site on a major artery through my town 
and am I going to allow it to be an acre and a half, two acre pad site, parking, 2,000, yeah, 2,000 square foot building with a drive through, with a double drive through. Is that what we want? McDonald's. Right. No. Call it whatever. Yeah. Call it whoever. Right. I don't, and it's, I don't want to slander one. With, <laughs> with 70, one over the other. With 75, though, one of the big issues is really access management because you have all those people congregating in one area on a road with, with little to no traffic control at all. There's no left-hand turn lanes, so it becomes kind of a nightmare situation in that particular case. But So I trying to separate, is it an access management issue or is it just a, an issue? I think it works for that area because of the airport, okay. because of where where you are and the hotels and I mean it, everything works there. I don't believe it would work here, so that's what John mm -hmm. I believe is saying. Yeah, I mean seventy five isn't residential, so it, it works there. And the other right. part of the other part that, to me that differentiates twenty from seventy five is that twenty, despite what they said at Z parking, is it's a it's a it's a highway. It's a highway. We have a highway that goes through the middle of our town. People go 50 miles an hour down the hill. They wait to see if the traffic light at the, at the post office is going to turn red, and they run through it when it does. <laughs> you have almost gotten killed there. And you come, and they rush like heck to make it through that traffic light. And they're going 50 to 55 miles an hour through the tents, through the center of our community. Whereas up on 75, it's not the speed limit up there. And it's not the, it's not just, is it not the speed limit? It's not the actual observed speed because it is. I mean, it's curb cut here, curb cut there. Uh, Wendy's here, uh, Taco Bell there, Mickey D's, gas station, Shell. You know, take your pick, Exxon, whatever you're doing. Uh, parking lot here, parking lot there, entrance to three or four, you know, hotels, motels. So your, your effective speed limit up on that road is like 30, 35. And sometimes it's even more like 25, just because of the traffic flow. But in our town, Route 20, to me, is just, it's absurd. It's drive-through. It's, it's absurd, the speed limit. You know? but there are, there and I'm are, part of the problem is, as are probably everybody else in this room, you know, we all do. Because if you're not going 50 miles an hour, you know, people are coming up. Conservative, people are coming right. 60, 65. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No one's going to say I that. Because I mean, the, the we're on tape. The police officers <laughs> don't write. We're on tape. You know, the police officers are are writing tickets at 60, 65 yeah. to slow them down. But remember, they had that traffic study with Z, mm -hmm. and they had the average speed as being. Like 50, 55. And to me, that. to me, it's like, well, yeah, that's because there's a traffic light right, right there. Right. Right. So you were catching a lot of those people that were actually stopping, and then, you know, were accelerating from the traffic light. So sure, they were going by at 35 miles an hour. The average speed. Right. Because when it's green, they're going well, by at it's 60. 55, 60. But well, what's slowing down the traffic is that there is a lot of retail. But there, are, there are there are traffic yeah. lights. Yeah, <laughs> there are several like you know when you go to Vermont, you're traveling on major interstates, and it'll be like a or or, or a route, you know, Route 20, and put it, you know, I'm not very good with routes in Vermont, but um, you always have those areas where they travel through, and you're traveling 50, 60 miles per hour, and then you get to a village center area, and right. you know, the roads get a little bit narrower, and mm -hmm. So I mean that's so since that's our traffic pattern, if there was a way we could slow the twenty down in right. the village center for one. I agree. But if we do that, we don't want to have that area where we've slowed down then be developed with auto centric uses. Right. I always uh, when I when I go to uh, to Route seventy five or over to the airport, my my blood pressure and my stress come up. I mean, go, go way up. And and whenever I'm coming off of off of the off of the section, you know, coming back off of the highway, and then finally getting into East Granby, my whole thing just goes right down. You know, and and, and I think that that should be something that that we should. Uh, when you come off, I'm sorry. When you come off the connector. Yeah, when you're coming off to the connector, I always find that that I feel so much better 
that I'm home, the stress mm -hmm. and, and everything. That's what and I, I think that's what we should celebrate <laughs> here is that is that we're getting away from all of that. The the, the stress reliever is, is 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 coming off that connector. But the gateway know. of call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> versus, 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 yeah, versus, as, versus as you're heading east though, it's like it's like <coughs> it's like this Build up. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Oh, I guess. You're now leaving call. That's right. Because, but, I, but I truly believe that, that we could do something. Take it with you. First, first you have to convince the DOT to do it. They all, the DOT naturally wants to widen and right. make things. But, once but, but, once but I, I turn up, left off in Newgate, that's it for me. The call is gone. Okay. Well, see, as soon as I get off the connector, well, why is it that? It shouldn't be. And I go by the airport on the other it's, side. It's because but I think that's important for us to to market. I, I I really do. Is that that whole calm, that relaxation, that uh, think about what you just did by saying no auto centric uses in the village center. You have just forced any retailer or service establishment that's going to go in there to survive on the basis of walk-in traffic or very limited automobile traffic, which means you ain't going to get anybody. You oh. just killed the village center. I don't think we're saying that. No, well, kill that's it. what the words say. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Kill the village center. I guess when I, when I put auto-centric, auto I meant drive-through kind of traffic, uh, fast okay. food, so. Then make it no drive-through and all. And, and a similar question, how do you feel about strip retail, more strip retail? Because it hadn't been discussed either as a desirable or undesirable. Does it have to be strip? I don't know, strip? when you think about it, consider the fact that Route 20 is one of the gateways. Mm -hmm. You were talking about making the gateway inviting, appealing, etc. Well, strips don't have to be ugly. No, I was just right, going to say, right. strips don't have to they be ugly. They don't have to be ugly. Right. They, if, they don't have to be And there's enough people that drive. No, and the reason I ask that question is because if you want niche retail or, or uh, you know, specialty places, ones that become destinations or can capitalize on your heavy drive-by traffic, you, there's got to be spaces for them to operate. And those spaces are either going to be in a multi-occupant building, like a strip, or they're going to be a whole bunch of freestanding buildings where you're back to the same problem as the, as the Route 75 fast food access problem. Automobiles are a necessary evil to, to some extent, that's true. Can't bust it well, if it's, well, if it, I think the point's well taken. The strip malls, to say we don't want them just absolutely is crazy in my mind. But we want them to be attractive. attractive. And if any of you spent any time in Southern California, what they call the uh, inland area there, you know, west or uh, east of LA and mm -hmm. San Diego, before you get to the mountains, yep. they have retail, and you're going to say, oh no, that's like San Antonio or something. No. They have barriers, trees, berms, whatever. You can't even tell what stores are behind that when you're going down the boulevards, unless you're local and you know. Because if you go in there as a visitor, you can hardly find it. You have to, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be strip mall in the old sense of it. Yeah, absolutely. Right, that's not necessarily good for the guy that owns the yeah. shopping so center. Yeah, yeah, but we're not, we're not getting a lot of international travel. Yeah. You can't it's find our no way around. Right. Most of the business is going to be from the local area. Maybe not, I'm not saying just East Granby, right? The general area. And from a traffic control point of view, isn't a strip mall actually beneficial because you have one or two Perfect. accesses into a large parking area versus a hundred driveways, right. you know, right. 17 feet apart? Right. One traffic light or whatever. Yeah. And you, you can control light. the traffic. Some there. of the some of the trends that we see with that in, in citing a building, a lot of the times they're, they're trying in village center zones to bring the buildings up to the roadway and put the parking in the back. Right. And you know, makes it a little more aesthetic just by simply flipping it. You know, it, you can still have that same. Design. The only the only strip malls we have are basically repurposed buildings. We've Correct. Never had ever built specifically for them. And as we, as we do the when we start to get into details of the village center master concept plan, those are things that we're going to have to take a look at. What's our existing infrastructure and how can we build around it? But I think overall, from these two, the the. Yeah. Much, you know, much like the market analysis that we had in the past, 
you know, uh, the Rose Report, which was written in 1998, categorized East Granby as a bedroom community and basically said, you come, you sleep here, and you go to work. And you have a good traffic count, you have low demographics, and they said essentially that, you know, the, the, the future of East Granby was going to be gasoline stations and convenience stores. And I can tell you honestly, I receive inquiries on gasoline stations probably 20 times since I've been here, 30 times since I've been here. People that, that's what they're looking for. Valet parking probably seven times. Hotel once. So, uh, and the other one that I have to put up here. Uh, Mm, yeah. Keep getting people that want to put storage facilities uh, out on Route 20. <laughs> not on Route 20, maybe in the back. I agree. We do have we do have areas like our Commerce Park B zone that would probably be more right. appropriate for that. Right. But the problem with that is is they they're companies that want to get the exposure and the, right. the, the site. Right. Yeah, yeah, they want to be able to. <laughs> they want you to be able to see it, so you'll say, "Oh, I want to put my stuff in there." But I think overall, the consensus is still the same. We want things that are going to be character driven. We want, we don't want to be a bedroom community. We want to have community character. And I think that's what you see reflected most in these, these examples. <coughs> let, me, let me give you something to think about. Yeah, Gary, Gary triggered this thought when he was talking about the manufacturers and how the manufacturers said they liked the educated workforce, except they were all getting old. And uh, my thought was, Gary has just managed to offend every person in this room. <laughs> uh, but that leads to the fact that I think you're the wrong group to be making these decisions. Where are the under 40 people in, in uh, East Granby in this planning process? The future of East Granby is not your future. It's their future. Where's their input? How are you getting their input? We, Ironically, we, we actually had uh, yeah, Dave McNally. We, we're, we're working on that. We're having a uh, our uh, our, our RAP kids English answering that answering that question. But it's not it's not due until April fifteenth. I think right. we funded it. We gave them a little time to work. With right. Them. So so what they're going to be doing is doing that for an for an assignment. To, to take a look at it to see what see what they want and and it's going to be on on record which is fine but that's now the opposite end of the and, spectrum. and i understand that yeah, right. but that, i just wanted that, to let you know is that we did yeah. reach out mm -hmm. because that was gary's idea and i ran well with here, here's it, and a, we're getting that here's another way to reach out you're not going to get those 35 and 40 uh, year olds to come to meetings they're too busy being at home after work taking care of their kids uh in their duties at home but you can use social media to, to uh, go out to them. Uh, there's a little place in, uh, in northeastern Iowa uh, that had some vacant space in the downtown. Uh, and uh, they posted it on, on Facebook, doing a little uh, survey. Uh, we would like to know what kinds of uses you would like to see in your downtown. And the number one ranked uh, idea that came in was an ice cream uh, store. So then they went out again, round two, and said, we got these spaces. We're looking for somebody to do an ice cream store. A guy who had an ice cream store in the next town over said, I've been thinking about doing a branch. Right. And he came in. So, I mean, you need to reach out using other methods than just just inviting people to come to, to meetings. And that yours is a good one for the real you know, younger group. It's right. a good idea. I just want to say for anybody that wasn't at any of our meetings in 2014, we had um, three of the most well attended meetings that we've ever had. They've been they were sold out standing room mm -hmm. only. Um, people out waiting out uh, outside even to get in. And we, from that, gathered that there was no interest in distribution centers. We gathered from that that there was um, no interest in any kind of banquet facility or any sort of entertainment facility. Okay. Wasn't an objection to what vineyard, mind you, <laughs> but rather to what the vineyard might have as a uh, 
auxiliary or ancillary use. We also um, found out that, as we know, quite a few people object to the quarry and the activity that goes on there. So we did have, in 2014, a good cross sample of our community who came before the Planning and Zoning Commission. And from that, I think that Gary, myself, and Dave, and Tom, and of course, those of you that were at some of these meetings, yeah. um, well aware that the 30 and 40 year olds, when they want to tell us what it is that they want or don't want, they'll get out of the house. They will get out of the house and they will be as, as vocal as anybody. So. But those are only the vocal anti. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it's all NIMBY. It's, it's all NIMBY. There's not right. going to be the people that are for it yep. coming to these meetings to yep. tell you about it. Yep. Well, it's a good point. I mean, that's one of the things that we need to think about for our upcoming workshops, especially when we start to deal with site-specific areas or the potential of site-specific areas. Well, um, the question would be, well, we want to hear what they would like to have, not what they don't want to have. Sure. That's being more yes. positive. Yeah, they, they, they probably don't even know this yeah, meeting is even going well, on, yeah. but not that do we yeah. yeah, input and... Yeah. Well, they will at 2 in the morning when they're watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> they know. When they see you spill your coffee over there. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Everything's right on this. <laughs> just just <laughs> like, <laughs> if I might, that, that's why <laughs> next month's meeting, which is also scheduled for the 24th, um, it will be a, a meeting that those of you that are out there that were um, at our meetings in 2014, no, I think it's straight out there. It usually is. Um, but, you know, that would be the opportunity for all ages. So. And one of the things that they, when we did have so the, the controversial applications that you're talking about, social media was a way that they were using to connect with each other. They are very aware of the, the projects and the, and the workshops, so I, I do believe that the, they'll be here at the, the next meetings. Um, can we reinforce that, Gary? On, oh, yeah, and that, you know, we're, we're planning on doing so. Yes, sir. I noticed yes. everybody isn't on it because each grand be fun yep. does tend to uh, get the word out. From no, and Mark's, Mark's idea about the using social media to post a poll, some polling questions might be might be a good one, along with uh, Mr. McNally helping me with the, you know, kind of that younger demographic as well. I thought that would kind of be an interesting project for our commissioners to get to read about what what the kids think the future of East Grammy should be. Um, as kind of a last exercise before we wrap things up. Um, I'll read them into the record so, <laughs> so, so you don't have to. Okay. Okay. I appreciate <laughs> it. It's kind of a last exercise. We have some zoning maps out here. And um, for some of the ones that we decided that we'd like to see in town in the next 10 years, I'd like you guys to maybe talk amongst yourselves or work in small groups and start to think about the possibility of where some of these things that you suggested might be located or where would you like to see them located so whether it be retail multifamily sports complex uh, manufacturing i you know could be some a new location that you might pick out but take a look at the list and you know amongst yourselves in the next couple of minutes or so why don't you uh see if we can't come up with a couple of ideas of where where you might like to see some of these things. Are, are we just concentrating on the uh, on the town center? No, I think you can look at the town overall. The, the, the map is a zoning map, so it shows you what the, the existing zoning is or the districts are. So it could be an expansion in or around. Um, I, did, I also brought these other maps, the land use maps, the future land use plan, the open space plan, and the natural resource plan, just as background if you've, you know, what about development near the other airport? What uh, the tri? That's fine yeah, too. Tri -town, yeah. It's part of the, the Simsbury uh, yeah. airport down on what is it, Floydville? Floydville. Yeah, Floydville Walker. Road. Walker, Walker. Walker Road. Um, there, that is owned uh, Commerce Park as well. So, it's is it something that can be considered. Is it zoned for big yellow buildings that are? Uh, you turn down Walker. Need to come down. <laughs> Yes, and I've, I've heard they're going to be coming with their demolition plan soon. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to come down on its own. Well, somebody's going to get hurt. 
In the meantime, if you have any questions or whatever, feel free to ask. I always watch the guide bar. Okay. Retail the grocery and we want it in this general area. That's necessarily there, but it wouldn't be benefit certainly along the top of the area. I always thought that this would make a great ice cream store like they did years ago. I guess yeah. they had an ice cream place in there. I think that place would make a fortune. Yeah. That's that works. Oh, yeah. 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 No, we sold it to John. Yeah. 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 Air National Guard is going to have a new entrance. Good seeing you. You too. Oh, well, they are? Yeah. 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 Property yeah. Ripley Park. Yeah. I believe they're going to make that. Yeah. 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 Just oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can they call it spectator park. Yeah. That's where yeah. we're yeah. So there's going to be, there's going to be a new yeah. way yeah. yeah. and yeah. security yeah. Uh, enhanced. Because they closed it off at night. Right. Yeah. 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 Where it's currently the current yeah. environment. Yeah. 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 Just because it's not on the list doesn't mean you can't talk about it or put it down. It's not really available, though, for multifamily housing. Well, there's the that's the big that's the big that's the big right here. Right here. But the uh, but yeah, so I mean, so the sewer system would yeah. probably be used. Yeah. Yeah. The sewer system is going that far. 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 The sewer system is going that far.
Yeah. 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 Yeah
down through Walgreens and somewhere around Dollar Tree. And so if that's going to develop this, what else can happen there as far as the development? Because there's already an existing line there, there's not going to be any additional to the folks that live. Literally going to be one line next to another. Yeah, it's already whatever. It's not going to. Shouldn't inhibit development. Yeah. It would encourage certain yeah. kinds of yeah. development that yeah. needs that utility. All those people. I mean, no, it is literally, more of a, even though it's several hundred yards, it's an island. Also, yeah, it's, 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 it's wide open. Right. 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 Well, it got approved for a uh, gas station a oh, yeah. a good a long time ago, and then the guy never did it. It's so it was to clear. Yeah. 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 I didn't realize that. It was clear the water. Yeah. Yeah. It would look Which is real. You know, there's a lot of things. Well, this is a shame. This is Once the once the commission approved the gas station there. That was it. You're not going to put the nursing home across the street from the cemetery, are you? Who's going to back that one up? Yeah, I will. What about the back? It'll be instead of the continuum of care of three things, it'll be four things. I didn't think it was going to be a hard selling point. So they just we just a commercial yeah. the last gas yeah. station. Yeah. 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 I mean, why was it said that that no, was, was this? It was, it was that yeah. property yeah. that you guys yeah. 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 That was just yeah. the yeah. only yeah. going to have yeah. one yeah. more yeah. gas yeah. facility yeah. out here. Yeah. Yeah. Port Cemetery, right? Where's Cumberland Farms? They wanted us to go up here over there. We get it. Where's the cemetery? This is cemetery. This is this is what it would be. And what they were going to do is they were going to put a comedy. Because they go down the Higley Road. They were going to put a matching building. Uh, yeah. uh, so they were going to put a matching building. I think they're pretty nice. And, and, instead, and, instead, yeah. and instead, and instead, yeah, they fact, marched uh, had discussions with over to the Senate years ago right. and put that in school. A couple but more minutes. They they wrap up. Farms could support both. The legislation. I mean, the traffic and all that. Support both. They sniffed a little bit a while back. But it's the or same. It's the same thing. They don't. But they don't want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So where they they don't want now? just. Basically, the uh, 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 right. natural gas ends at the. Oh, Cumberland saying that, or <laughs> Cumberland saying that the town yeah. doesn't want right. that. Right. Right. Cumberland's under that impression. Right. The town. Yeah, because they were talking about having um, a gas good. station on the front property <laughs> of the. To me, the What's the village center that's the property and the strip mall is there with GO. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right on the wild. I was on planning and zoning when that. Mike Fish. Mike Fish. Yeah. That fiasco. So they were talking about doing that at one time and that never really developed. Right. Well, there's something that we're not talking about now, but we're using the quarry and the apartments in like one portion. Be so far off. Yeah, be really far far so far off. And them. besides, even when they're, they're already talking, that when they don't worry anymore, this is still a useful it facility. Right there, factory. Right. Yeah, that's right. the, the factory. Right. 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 The factory can still run if they can. There's a little bit of water. But it's still, you need to still burn. They'll sign out what? The restoration process. Right. And just real estate. Right. They'll use the center look like a pretty processing plant. They're doing something. They'll just be hauling in. Bold. You know, from wherever it's going to be. Right. You know, their buildings here, yeah, and so it's yeah. kind of yeah, a so it's yeah, they can, they can, but I still think, yeah, I still think, still need a restoration of the land for this. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I don't know, I just don't understand how can we uh, tax them on the actual bring those property across from uh, the post office. Yeah, a lot of that's what a lot of it is what's right here. I don't know why we didn't consider it the village center. How do you proximity of it actually? You know, the tax number of dollars per cubic yard. Some things have changed over the years. Put in the Beltline Highway. Some of the drainage may have changed over the years. So it's a product. 
wetter today than it was it be, say seven years ago. It's, it's value. Since it's, it's, you know, it's value the, is the value roadway there. The I don't know. We'd have to the probably use you know, take a closer look at that. Yeah. But we have the, the resource away. <laughs> basically, the developability of a one single family home. So that's why they look at it. In the last future land use plan, they really only consider for an agriculture. And then we'll take the value of the site. If you go on the north side of it here. Because here's where the pond is right there. That's how you yeah. Yeah. Um, Every ton or however they measure it going out, they measure it right. Yeah, because you know that's how they you know go that's how they Yeah, yeah there's a good they portion of all that. Scales. Looking at the natural resource oh, plan, that's all, all wet. Well, that's what they're not all wet. Anytime you buy That's what they talk about in terms of futures. Whenever I was on there with my big truck, because if you go out in there and go out and make charge me out and stop you, we go out towards the job line, we see a big Y over there on the left hand side, so a huge solar farm out there, you have to put it down. Or a sports complex as well. Yeah, it's Shuffield. No, it's Shuffield. It's actually Shuffield. Yeah. Well, the only reason it's quiet right back here is because you can bring in and out of the green holes going to the or just hop over here for some service. Services. Yeah, not, you know, so if they wanted to make a quick getaway, they couldn't make any Or if you want to grab a huge whatever. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you who's nearby. doing a lot of it is Pepperidge Farms over in Bloomfield. They have a whole thing. I think residential is part of it. It seems like it makes so much sense. It's all through South. It's all through South. And it's all What's the hold up there? Just the economy? Wait, the thing that. Peter yeah, right, they're all set up for single family homes. Well, the thing of it is, is that looking at kind of at school you know, street, still we has a permit, so it's ready to go. It's just kind of what's his name? Like the, um, like that. In order to attract and feel it's the same as yeah, across the street. street. Yeah. Very much similar yeah. scale yeah. and design yeah. to yeah. what's yeah. across the street on Crystal and Harvest. From two bedroom house landing, which is right here. Yeah, single floor master bedroom on the first floor, kind of one side of the street. Yeah, wanted to keep it still. One of the properties actually used to be. And then, you, and, then you, and then you'd have to have yeah. a legitimate part of a condominium, yeah. and uh, this is a lot of the scale and yeah, design was yeah. set up the for corner is pretty bad. Uh, bedrooms on the back of that, that the yeah. first floor to, see yeah. to yeah. still be attractive. If, if we can't get grant money, we can't find a way yeah. to finance that. Which the town will never do. I'm glad we're as the town. So the family will find a way. Demographic Sure. Yeah, roofs. Yeah. 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 roofs. Yeah. 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 Right, right, right now, you're right right now you got a Paisley Village and Metacom Homes. So something like that would provide a different variety. Something that you wouldn't necessarily have to take in there. You are going to get in and have all that. Actually, I'm doing the job. But there's no shot in the job. There are five to ten year wish lists. So if you want to make a pedestrian friendly, you have to put the sidewalk. Or you got to put the sidewalk. We did. Do. We did. Uh, does does Speed Spirit have that there. over in um, Iron Horse Road? You, do they have speed bumps going down through there? No, no they, just, they just stop, stop, they just stop, they stop at every. Yeah, they, 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 they have stop signs every, every thirty yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. There's a road though where the stop signs are coming in. Right. Not extremely successful because the well, they did. Of course, I think it's a big village. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I kind of, when I think of School Street, I think of what they're, what they're starting to do here. The Audrey had a really nice plan there. Or he, was, he did. He had a really nice plan. But, uh, Audrey, what's his first name? J.R. J.R. Audrey, yeah. You guys need more time? It's one of those things. I mean, that's marginal of all here. Yeah. Looking for people to walk from here to the center, you need sidewalks or something. Like a little mini blue bit square. They were already a half an hour old. Here's a community. What's the sound? Which is that? Which is that? It's a multi family. It's a multi family. All right. Why don't we why don't we start to share our ideas? We have one of the same maps up here. Um, the two bold leaders from each group would would help me out a little bit. Um, Go ahead, John. Go ahead, Lee. You're our leader. Go ahead. So uh, we'll just take them one by one. Retail, grocery, pharmacy, especially grocery. Is there a certain particular area that your group had had identified on the map where you thought that you know development should be concentrated? 
Uh, I, I guess I'll speak for our group since Either Jim, Jim's going to clean up his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, we discussed uh, to some detail that we want the, uh, that we would think the natural place for the uh, multifamily housing would be in the village center and the uh, property just to the east of that. Okay. Okay. You know, referencing the 130 acre parcel is actually a good spot. Okay. And the idea there is to get foot traffic, you know, into the center. Okay. Well, next to the red. Uh, the red is already. It's currently zoned business. Red is business. <coughs> yeah, so it'd be just east of that red part. Okay. Yeah, we am pretty much concentrated on that. Okay. You guys didn't have any ideas for the sports complex? I thought I heard some. I, I well, we talked about the 130 acre parcel again. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Right. Not necessarily a bad thing. No. But and, and they could be shared, I would think. It is a large parcel. It is a large parcel. You need a lot of parking, though, because it's one of my complaints about the bubble over in East Windsor. It's not a lot of parking. You got to have enough people for the. The, the kids that are playing in the games then, and the ones that are coming in to come in for the next game as well. Uh, well, Jim's point, one of the points we talked about as far as the nursing home slash assisted living is, we didn't, looking at the village center or what's laid out, is like an ideal spot for us. We did not, you know, come to a conclusion. That right. Like this area, that area. They, they in your discussions, did you talk about, even though you didn't come up with a specific area, but was there a certain aspect of where, where you think it would be, you know, do you want it in closer, obviously it needs to be hooked up to water and sewer, so would you want it to be closer to the village center zone or kind of out the way somewhere? I don't think we, we, we didn't get to that detail as okay. far as it. We, 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 that's fine. Yeah, we, we, I assume it wouldn't be in the village center. Did any of the others come up in your discussions? I think the manufacturing, I mean, there's couple locations now for manufacturing, so stay within those those areas. Within those confines? Okay. And well, also the vineyard, Paul, you brought up the vineyard agriculture that uh, Brignall's property across from the post office okay. would be probably going to be open space, so yeah, it, was it would be nice to enhance that. So that was a little different Good conversation point. that we had in the larger group, and that's if across from the uh, the, the center there, the Brignall property across the way, if that could be beautified a little bit, even right. even like a park, you know, something so it's, you know, take advantage of the wetland land, maybe turn it into a small pond or something, and the walkway through there or something, just to kind of spruce up the center a little bit. Okay. Village Green. Village Green. Where the farm Where he has sells the produce, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. He's got a couple of vines there. The East the farmers farmers market. Market. Yeah. I think I think overall the goal of uh, creating community spaces is going to be become a, a, a big uh, goal in our master concept planning is making sure that there's a reason why we're drawing people in. Why don't you guys over here? Did you guys have any? We talked a lot about um, multifamily. Okay. Yeah. And we sort of looked at a couple different areas that we felt would be appropriate. And they tend to be in and near the village center. Okay. Um, but looking up East Street, you know, and, and hoping and wishing that someday um, that Mr. Wilson, that his project would maybe come to fruition. And then further up, um, we identified what is known as the Nicholson Farm Site. Since the um, utilities, the sewer, and water's found its way up mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but maybe in the future that might be a multi-family site. We also talked about the nanny parcel uh, um, being um, probably right for some sort of mixed use, part of which may or may not be multi-family. Okay. Um, you, know, you can call them higher-end apartments if you want, or you know, some sort of... Our group... Um, Looked at that parcel though, and um, quite frankly, isn't necessarily opposed to some sort of development similar to what may have been proposed by an applicant at one point. 
Okay. Um, so we didn't totally sell it off as, um, you know, mixed use or residential use only. Um, I think we did agree that we would extend the village center a little bit, and there was some talk amongst our group about, um, you know, hoping and dreaming that someday there might be um, truly a pedestrian friendly uh, set up on uh, School Street, whether it be grants for sidewalks or um, my personal favorite, which is just to slow the street down. Um, but to somehow have a, uh, a pedestrian way which would link that large parcel, especially if it were to be a mixed use development, to be able to link that to where we are right here, right now, and that is link it to the community center. And a little um, mini blue back square in between. Yeah, no, nope. no, <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think our group was. <laughs> I don't think we were. <laughs> we weren't heading that way. I don't no. think we were. Were we? But uh, but I think. I, well, yeah. I do mention that to Lee like, yeah, quite yeah. a bit. A mini blue back square. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like just being close to the airport and the highway the access and. Job, you know, businesses that do offer, you know. We had, we had talked job. about that you know, a little bit with the national, mm -hmm. the idea of a national chain. And one of the things that becomes difficult with a or locating with a national chain is they really want to be on the interstate. Mm -hmm. And being mm -hmm. approximately, we're only two miles off Route 91, but mm -hmm. you're kind of, you know, East Grammy's kind of somewhere in between where you, you get, you know, west of the river and you start to look at, you know, a little more rural connections with Route 20 or say uh, Route 44, you see a lot of development along there. But you're kind of just close enough to the interstate and kind of just close enough to Farmington Valley where you're, 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 you're competing with those demographics, whether it be population and or um, median income. So one of the things that I did think would be interesting is actually specialty retail. If you could ever convince, like, an, say, an outlet mall, more of a destination, something like Cabela's was a kind of a destination shopping. Um, you know, that specialty market, those tend to draw from lo larger distances. So if you put an outlet mall over there, it would, it would, actually, it would actually draw people from further away. You would, you would still draw people in from, say, the Farmington Valley. Like area. a Tanger outlet, too, or yeah. a Bass Pro Shop? Or well, or proximity, or proximity to Day Hill Road. Um, you know, I think would be attractive for people coming home, being able to do their local shopping there. I think it would be different enough from the regional malls that we have in Manchester and Enfield and uh, shops in Farmington Valley and Avon and stuff like that, that it would, it would provide interest. So I think there's, you know, it could be something to that, you know, well, that I kind of what we're heading towards is what he was talking about, uh, Mark up there on the screen was like a niche market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we can find what a niche market and maybe develop on that thing. And, uh, it's an important point because one of the things that we've, we've heard that we don't want is that Route 75 and that right. fast food, that convenience, that bedroom community. We want to be a community with character and have a village center zone and have something that we can care about. We don't necessarily have that now, but that's what I'm trying to get you guys interested in is that idea of a master concept plan and creating that walkable Main Street slash School Street environment. One, one of the things I hear over and over again about this community is the uh, recreational, mm -hmm. uh, the open space, you know, a lot of uh, activities, mountain biking, uh, trails, uh, kayaking. So that's one of the big themes that I keep hearing over and over about how they, people like this community is so based on those things. Along a theme or a niche, yeah. if say, Windsor Locks and Route 75 is kind of the uh, convenient side of the airport, then maybe East Granby could be the extended stay side of the airport. Um, there's a lot of corporate travel that we get, not as much anymore because of telecommuting and stuff like that, but there's a lot of corporate travel. You're close to Day Hill Road, one of the largest uh, you know, corporate areas in uh, the capital region area. You're close to the proximity to the airport itself. Um, goes along with John's dinner orientated. Uh, we have some of our local business owners like New Fern that have you know, account executives and people coming in for business travel that it's one of their complaints is we have restaurants but not necessarily a high class restaurant where you want to be able to sit down and have a business meeting type of yeah, thing. Not a so, client restaurant. 
Yeah, and if you have that, if you could attract that along the hotel line, if you could attract that niche and get that ball rolling and, and really push to get that long extended stay, well, maybe you could be the upper side of the airport. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, let me put my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Walk up the, the, gate, the gateway to calm. He's going to become a clown. There you go. I'm starting to hear it. The clown's got the river. Yeah, got the river. So right 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 mountain biking, and road biking, kayaking, and hiking. Yeah. Building, yeah. Building, yeah. Off, yeah, building off that recreational. If you have somebody that's coming East in. He's come play. Yeah. If well, you have somebody it, coming in doing. Uh, Play Say, and be calm. <laughs> right. Just, just, just sitting, you know, out, you know, in North Maine, just you know, in the spring and summertime, the the bikes, or even the motorcycles, the bikes, of, you know, the bikers that, the you know, bicycles, you know, that just go by. It's amazing. And sure. The old cars I and mean, people are just coming through to where it was connecting them to go for a country ride. Yeah, you get the road race, the the five k road race. I think. I, 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 I used to work in a company. Hill Road, and we used to have people that would come in and do corporate travel. That would come in, and you know they would, you know, they would be flying back and forth like every single weekend to go see their families. And they maybe be scheduled there for a project for a six month period, working on an IT project for you know their parent company. Mm -hmm. You know, it was out west somewhere. And you know, what better place than to you know stay at East Granby, where you have the village center zone, and you have access to that small town environment that you're from basically out west and you can stay in a nice quaint extended stay hotel and have access to East Granby Farm, <coughs> uh, the Metacomet Trail, and uh, the Farmington Valley Greenway. So I mean there, I think there's that momentum or something that you can look towards, but you, along with that you have to raise your community expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's like what do you bring first, the hotel or the restaurants and shops and all that? And, you know, you just, just like just the same time. Yeah. Just like our example, you, you know, or, or to Mark's point, you have to make your, your community first attractive for that, yeah. whatever theme that you're looking to attract. Yeah, it's Day Hill Road. I remember when I first started working at Day Hill Road in 1980, I think it was, it was mm -hmm. just one big long tobacco line that had street lights and beautification, two lanes going down, right. and then just over the years, everything just popped up. They said, you build it, they will come. And they did get it. And so to his point earlier about the, uh, I think it was the um, antiques, you know, they had three antique shops, so they declared themselves the antique capital right. of the world, whatever. I mean, with, with a, um, outdoor recreation. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that, that's something that's, that's doable. Sure. And, and the point I was going to make is on the left-hand side there, that, that, that listing, I think the idea of of developing a niche is worth capturing somewhere here. And I think mm -hmm. that's, yep. I kind of like it. Yeah. I can bicus, tell you that when... Bicus, paddle us. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that there's enough. <laughs> that was that was when you were talking about <laughs> wet water kayaking, right? There's, there's, there's a couple of nights a week that are night ride, that are night ride rides out of Colts Park. And that parking lot is yeah. full. And those guys, a lot of times, are going into town and they're stopping at Geo's or Sure. J and G's for a couple of couple of pops afterwards. And, and I see kayaks. They ride their bikes down. So then they ride their cars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they they ride their cars. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and, and the kayaks. I don't. I bike there. I don't want to take the bike down south. Wherever yeah, I see yeah. them at Geos all the time. But, but, but for everybody <laughs> wondering what your plan of conservation and development is, it's, it's, it's everything that we just talked about tonight. It's developing that theme. It's building that momentum, and it's standing behind it from whatever standpoint you have, whether that be a de development expectations. Uh, so we do have two fir uh, for or workshops still left to go through. They're going to be a little more site specific based off of, you know, some of the problem areas that we found, um, you know, over the last uh, several years and some of the input that we've gotten. Uh, March 24th is our next uh, workshop scheduled for Tuesday. It'll be here in the public hearing room. Yeah, that's uh, the too. focus on that will be commercial development along Seymour Road. Uh, we have uh, industrial development that's being that's being uh, developed in the town of Windsor that as it comes down International Drive comes to, uh, heads into Seymour Road in, in East Granby. So uh, we'll talk about that. And also the possibilities of future expansion of the, of the, the quarry. Um, so that'll be March 24th, and we hope you come up back out for that. And then our last workshop will be April 28th, 
and the discussion with that will be the Commerce Park Transitional Zone. <coughs> On your zoning maps, the, the area zone in purple is our Commerce Park Zone, and as, as you get into how do you connect the, our industrial zone to our village center zone, the idea is looking at a possible rezoning of that and looking at uh, some of the areas that you guys identified for you know, potential multifamily development. Um, and then lastly, that evening we'll be discussing some of the few good things that we were talking about with the village center zone. One of the big next steps in order for us to get that vision out to people, we really need to, uh, to uh, uh, create a master concept plan. And that can be exciting. That can be actually, um, Leslie Cosgrove gave me a, a copy of uh, one of the studies that they had done in another or similar community. And what it really is is a, you know, kind of a booklet of, you know, an illustration of what, what type of development that you think is suitable um, in your village centers and what kind of character do you want, what sort of, um, you know, design elements, things like that. So, um, you know, you can take a look at this on the way out if you want, but several communities in order to, you know, get that theme or that design out there, they put, to, put it in their master concept plan. So as people come in for development purposes, they already have something to reference. They already know what you're looking for. And you start to guide development instead of reacting to development. And that's what the planning process is. Zoning, you know, when you guys are as commissioners and you're wearing your zoning hat, it's really reacting to somebody that's looking to develop. Planning is, you know, taking a look at the next 10 years and trying to decide what type of community you want to be. So, if you have any questions, Thanks, uh, Gary. let me know. Yeah. Gary, Good to see you. Turn you turn the <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> yeah, I can put it together. I'll email it out. Okay, thanks, Gary. That was yep. really good. Very good.